Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of mathy time feels. Just those songs that are really difficult to groove to because there's so many weird rhythmic or metric ideas going on. We're going to be looking at the band Pretend with the song Those Luminous Noises Are God off of the Bones in the Soil Rust in the Oil album. Now, I was told that I could listen to the studio version or a specific live recording, that the live recording actually had some pretty good audio to it. And I'll say it is rather clear, but it's missing a lot of details. It's highly compressed. Um, and it's something that, if you're familiar with the song, probably doesn't sound too off as your brain's going to fill in the details you know. But as a first time listen, I just want to get that full. Uh, the full sound and production of the studio version. So that's what I'm going for today. Let's dive into this. See what Pretend is bringing to the table today. Oh, wait, what? That was clearly a 3 4. That is a wild 3-4, the accent patterns all over the place. You know, something I've noticed all week too is just phenomenal drumming. It's been a nice week for that. The warmth this airiness, just this guitar over here, and then, yeah. The guitars are really leaning into this three now. with an 8 bar chord progression. This chord right here on bar 5 is really interesting. Wait, no, we've shifted to a 4 bar loop. When we started this it was 8 chords, now we're down to 4. Because I expected it to return back home on bar 5 and instead we got something with a bit of tension and direction to it. punching in. So we're in a 4-4 now. I like those little uh, pauses half a beat before the new bar starts. It's an interesting little pocket of space. this it's it's almost insecure unsure of itself very very few musics songs I can think of that kind of has this shyness like baked into the music yeah the glock and spiel is nice there That one. This. Yeah, 
That second note on the second descent. Bass have these whole notes, sometimes half notes. Yeah, you can feel this as a fast 6 8 or a slow 4 4. It's rather clearly defined in the first half. The back half speeds up a bit. Creates a nice uh, hemiola groove in there. Oh, what is that? Only playing two and three of a triplet? back to the it's really it's easier to conduct it too than the one two three four five six that's just that's rough yeah offbeat accents back there on the symbols Heavy pulse. The drums not having anything of it. They're doing their own thing back there. You guys can pulse on that first beat. I, I'm not. <laughs> A little lick over here. <laughs> All that energy now cross sticking. I was gonna say it's arpeggiation, but I don't think it's a perfect arpeggio. So many rhythms going on right here though. All right, we have four on the floor on the bass kicks and snare. We have triplets over here on the left. We have quarter notes on a longer 3-4 over here. Oh wait, it's not 4 on the floor, because this isn't 3-4. Yeah, so the guitar and the bass are doing the same thing. Oh. I kind of hope that goes into something. That's in a... Hmm, that's an abrupt ending. Yeah, so that was fun. I'm just going to talk about the drums for a little bit because it has been an absolute blast checking out all these fantastic drummers this week. It is, it's not something I get to talk about too often. It's a complex melodic drum work. You know, we get to talk about co complex rhythms, patterns, stuff like that. That that pops up, especially when we look at progressive styles of music, which, I mean, if you go check the genre playlist for the channel, they dominate. <laughs> They're the most popular genres on the channel. Uh, progressive rock and progressive metal. But, uh, 
you know, we don't really get to talk too much about this type of uh, melodic drumming, which uses the entire kit. Yes, on a rhythmic side, very progressive. This is the type of polyrhythmic and even at times polymetric stuff that you would hear in, you know, some of the other times that I would distinctly bring up fantastic drum work. But what I love about this is that, much like some of the other stuff we've listened to this week, it is presenting a rhythm. It is a metronome for the band, but it does... Uh, it, hmm. Organize your thoughts, man. Their job doesn't stop there. They add melody to the song. Granted, we have the two guitars. They are presenting a majority of the melodic work here. We get the vocals uh, eventually in a couple of places towards the middle and end of the song as well. But the drums get to add to it, too. It isn't just, you know, hey, I'm going to put quarter notes on a closed hi-hat and every other beat on a bass kick. and Maybe, you know, triplets to spice things up on the snare. I'm just going to stick with this. Nah. No, the entire four-bar phrase of, of the drum pattern feels like it's always progressing forward. It isn't an idea in repetition, uh, you know, a small idea. It is uh, rhythmic movement. It's this pattern for this bar, and then this pattern for that bar, and then this pattern for that bar. It isn't, you know, this is my snare hand, and this is my cymbal hand. It's this is what I need right now. I'm going to hit the cymbal, but, you know, the next half beat, I need to come over and hit the snare with this hand. And so, you know, it's just all over the place. It presents something a bit more melodic in the percussive element here. And I'm just such a huge fan of that. As, you know, I've gushed about this, like, all week. It seriously has been a stunning week for uh, melodic, interesting drum patterns. Uh, and this song is, it's no different. I absolutely love it. And as usual, it's its the merger of things. It's finding the midpoint between that rhythmic complexity and, uh, you know, listenable beauty. It isn't too over the top where I have no idea what's going on, but it definitely is quite a bit more than your average drummer is going to put into music. Um, and that's, I mean, that's where I love to sit. Give me something that's palatable, but something I can chew on. And this drummer is absolutely providing that. You know, if I wanted to annotate this, I would have, I'd have a bit of work ahead of me, wouldn't I? <laughs> but again, it's not something that I find is too cerebral. You can really easily just fall into uh, this song and just absorb the drum work and feel it and i love finding music that fits that midpoint now on the topic of rhythm the drummer isn't the only one presenting interesting rhythmic ideas as i pointed out towards the end we had one guitar that was working with triplet ideas we had quarter note hits on the bass um, the snare was doing triplets of a different speed. I think they were doing triplet quarter notes and the guitar over here is doing triplet eighth notes. Um, and then to line up with the quarter note bass kicks, we also have a guitar doing chords over here with those quarter notes. And so there's quite a bit of rhythmic information being presented here, which is what forms the majority of the polyrhythmic writing in this. It's not just something that the drummer does where each limb is doing a different rhythm. It really is a full band experience. Every part of this uh, outfit is, you know, they're, they're complementing each other rhythmically. And it creates what sounds to be exceptionally complex ideas. And they probably are. But I think there's easy ways to break it down too. And it's tough for me to have broken anything down on this first listen, given how dense some of this rhythmic stuff is. But just like that example I had there towards the end of the song of how we had three different rhythmic layers going on, once you can kind of separate the rhythmic ideas into saying, oh, you're, you're doing this pattern and you're doing that pattern, I think it makes it easier to grasp what is going on. Right. When I described this week's theme, like at the beginning of this video, you know, it's 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 the music that's kind of tough to move your body to. It's tough to groove to because there's just 
wild phrasing or polyrhythms or or time signature switch ups and stuff. This song, from that perspective, at least I don't really feel like it fits too well into that. When we listened to the other four songs this week, there were certainly parts in there I was like, whoa, I, I have no idea what's going on here. I, I can't groove to this. But with this track, it's pretty consistent. There is some element just really laying down quarter notes. Whether it is a guitar or or one of the parts of the drums, maybe the bass, there is something giving you a core beat to fall into. Um, and, you know, normally I want to bring this up because, you know, it's the theme. I'm going to hyper-focus on rhythm. Um, but I really like it here. Like I said, it's a little weak for the theme. However, on the other side of things, I'm also really good at feeling out and sussing out rhythms. Like that's that's my job as a whole <laughs> is to understand music. So it's quite possible that there's probably a, a not insignificant amount of you listening to this right now that is like, wow, you know, that song was wild. I had no idea what was going on. I couldn't move my body to it. I couldn't, you know, bob my head or anything. And, uh, you know, it could very well be a very strange rhythmic song for some of you out there. Um, and so I, I don't want to discredit that experience either. You know, I don't want to say that the person who requested this was, you know, wrong because actually it's a really easy rhythm. Um, no, I mean, there's a, there's complexity in here, but I do like how unlike some of the other songs this week, there is this core beat present in here, and it isn't passed around. Oh, I can't remember what band it was. We checked one out this week, though, um, or what song it was, where there was a core pulse, but it was like a hocketed core pulse, where like different instruments were putting this downbeat, uh, this quarter note beat down, and if you found that, you could find the groove, but it wasn't like you could just key into one sound and, and get it, whereas here you can. Um, and I appreciate that. Again, it's it's about balancing complexity and simplicity. Um, and I think for something like this, it absolutely works to have that core pulse somewhere in the song. Now, the song isn't just rhythmic, though. There's a lot of atmosphere going on here. There's a lot of chord progressions. Uh, there's melody on top of chords that alters the chord information. There's a big story here, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it is. I think the lyrics are going to help a little bit with that. But I do genuinely enjoy the atmosphere on this song. It is light, but not without introducing a little bit of darkness. It is generally light in a heavy sense, you know, a weightiness uh, light there as well, but it also isn't afraid to include some heaviness as well, not necessarily in tone of instrumentation or anything like that, um, but just the way that notes feel. At the beginning of the song, there is a lot of dexterity, a, a lot of levity to it, a lot of quickly moving short notes. It creates something very bouncing. Um, I think a term a lot of people like to use is twinkling guitar sounds. We have plenty of that <laughs> at the beginning of the song, but there are parts of this where things slow down a little bit. The guitars don't play as frequently, pushing from, you know, triplet 16th notes and, and quicker uh, tempos. Uh, to bring in the tempo down a little bit and playing quarter notes or even the bass focusing on whole notes and half notes. Um, it's it, There are these moments where the song feels like it cannot move its legs quite as quickly as it could before, like they're weighed down some way. And balancing all of this, um, I think, is it's an interesting task because a lot of it has to come down to narrative. I don't know what the story is for this, as I've already mentioned, but I'm curious what Pretend is envisioning with this series of events. Why we start quick and light and move to heavy and, and dragging, and then a mix of both of those, and then at times introducing some really heavy, tense 
dissonance to create a bit of darkness and tension and, and almost anxiety in their works. And it's not even just like, hey, we're going to put a little bit of tension in here so that we can resolve our chord progression. It's like you guys are using some of the most tense chord comb or note combinations. It's not random because I can see the pattern of it. Uh, like that one section I had mentioned, you know, we had these descending, four descending notes. And then that same amount of space was rest and then four more descending notes. But that second note was like really, really dissonant. What, what was going on with that? Like you can easily create that progression, having some tension there for strong resolution without going that far. But they decided to go that far. What's going on with that? Um, and it's these little, these little moments that craft something that to me sounds unique. And it really makes me want to dig into the lyrics and see what's going on there. Uh, oh, that reminds me of something. I do want to, I want to get to that for sure. But, uh, there was something else I wanted to bring up too. Oh, Yeah. Dude, at the beginning of the song, I could have sworn we had an eight chord progression. Because I had, I remember that fifth bar comes up, and instead of returning back to the first chord, we introduce something that's a little unstable. Um, not quite the full resolution I expect from the beginning of a chord progression. But this makes sense to being in the middle of a chord progression because we still need tension in order to find that resolution later. And by the time I pointed it out, they had shifted to a four chord progression. What? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. That, that really confused me. I, there's a part of me that thinks I imagined that fifth chord. <laughs> and that maybe it was a four chord progression the whole time. Because it, it just makes no sense to simplify it at that point in the song. And like I said, it was as soon as I pointed it out to y'all when it changed. And I don't know. Really unsure about that. But if so, that's another really interesting harmonic part of the track. Now, on, a on, the, the, on the aspect of atmosphere. They did something... Very neat. Like I said, during uh, when the section came up, it almost sounded unsure of itself. Like both being uh, shy and insecure. It wasn't just that the vocals came in and, and were very light and timid. Uh, not a lot of air pressure behind them and not really a lot of definition either. But it was also the chord progression. It was also the two guitars kind of doing two totally different things. They lacked the presence of tone. I feel like the picking was lighter here as well. We had less accents. Uh, the drums lightened up quite a bit here too. Not just in, in rhythmic intensity, but also in volume dynamics. And everything just sort of becomes a shell of where we were. The confidence of the performance and uh, the confidence of the complex polyrhythmic ideas were gone. In its place was something that felt small and less intricate more shallow even <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard another song where my immediate reaction was dang you know they the, the idea that man they should have practiced this more so it could sound confident obviously I think that the intention here is for it to sound like it's undercutting itself to to lack that confidence they know what they're doing and they're pulling it off perfectly but again I've I've just Aside from, you know, really rough performances, you listen to something and, and you know, you're like, yeah, you guys need to, to practice that up a little bit before you get on a big stage. Like, that makes sense, right? <laughs> you can tell where somebody hasn't practiced as much and they're a bit less sure about, you know, a difficult solo section or something. Um, and you can feel the, the change in the performance of, of the playing of the instrument or the singing or whatever. That's what this feels like, but it's done intentionally. It's really mind-blowing. I love that moment so much. It is 
very evocative and is a clear representation, I think, of their intentions in, in, in displaying something I don't think I've ever seen in music before. It's just absolutely bonkers. I am going to go look at some lyrics right here. Hopefully that can give me some idea out of this. Otherwise, the song is just really beautiful from start to finish. And that's sort of what I think the narrative is. I mean, that could be applied to so many different stories. I didn't have any specific images in my head while listening to this. But between the, uh, you know, the beautiful drum patterns and the gorgeous twinkling guitar work and the way that all three of the string instruments play off of each other rhythmically and harmonically... It's just a gorgeous song from start to finish. Um, and I, I enjoyed my time with it. But maybe there's something deeper. Let's check out those lyrics. Real quick before diving into the lyrics. I did talk about how bright this song is multiple times. And it just dawned on me that it's called Those Luminous Noises. It's talking about the bright music. So I actually went and looked up Luminous just in case. I knew it had something to do with light, but I wasn't sure what the specific definition is. It says uh, emitting or reflecting light. Usually light that is steady, suffused, or glowing. So the idea of emitting or reflecting light. Music that showcases light. And the music in here that does that is god i'm not sure how to interpret that part <laughs> but i do think that listening to the song my first reactions to it is about the brightness of it the glittering elements and and uh, twinkling the twinkling guitar work there's another good uh, description for light although twinkling tends to be light coming in and out rather than a steady light but still while not necessarily uh, an adjective uh, a similar synonym for luminous twinkling still deals with bright lights so my my reaction to the music definitely lines up with what they are at least uh, alluding to with their title now lyrically this seems to be about looking towards the past with clarity the, well, actually, the song is, is, in a sense, the phrase, hindsight's always twenty twenty. that it's easier to see things through distance, that when we're in the moment, we don't always have the full picture, but when we look on past events, it's easier to see things we couldn't see previously. Now, it's it's done so in a bit of an obtuse way. This opening verse I find kind of difficult to parse. I get a general feel for it, but the words themselves... Well, let me read this for you. When you look up, the sky was over so long, temporarily suspended all the time. Having look up, I was convicted with the sound of the shadows taking cover in the night. There's some fun figurative use of words here that um, I'm not, I'm sure they make sense to the lyricist. And you know what? <laughs> I don't want to throw anyone on the, under the bus. I'm going to give a terrible example of something I've written in the past. Uh, in college, I took creative writing courses because uh, I was in a band at the time. I wanted to help with lyric writing. Um, and so, you know, I took, I took poetry writing classes, I took short story writing classes, anything that would help me with vocabulary and how to string ideas together in evocative ways. And one time, for whatever reason, I wanted to have a very figurative, poetic way of someone walking through a door. I didn't just want to say they walked into the house. So I said they cascaded in through the door. And I had strong convictions about this phrase. And <laughs> the teacher really let me know that, you know, that's not a good use of the word cascade. Cascade means to fall down. And I've never forgotten that. That was like, geez, 
15 years ago, maybe more. Eh, 15 years is probably right. Uh, and I've just never forgotten that. And that's sort of what I, like, he says, I was convicted with the sound of the shadows. I'm like, you know, that's, I kind of get what you're going for, but man, that is just not a clear way of, of writing figurative language here. And I'm really curious what, uh, what the lyricist was aiming for with this. But the idea of the sky being temporarily suspended all of the time, temporary, permanent, it got clashing ideas here. And maybe that's the purpose of it too, uh, because this is about memory. Right after this, it says, uh, the lines when you look back are so long and there was obviously effort in the past. You were close, so close that I took comfort in the sound of the air of places that we hadn't found. I don't really know what that means either. Taking comfort in the sound in the air of places we haven't found. The sounds of the atmosphere in places you haven't been. Just like, I don't know, is it just talking about the unknown? Normally, I don't like doing new things, but I was fine with when you were around. But again, like that's such an obtuse way to write that. It's it's poetic, I think, on, on one level, but very obtuse in another. Like I really have to think around the words to come to a conclusion. But anyways, back on this idea of thinking about the past and having clarity now. Verse 2 says, when we draw out our suspicions of the past, when we realize that we surely couldn't last on an impulse or reaction of our ideas on the future, things weren't going to work just based off of what we were doing. And so we get to the outro and he says, we got away from everything relating to a possible life. And I kind of like that idea, being so absorbed in this moment that there's no, there's no thought process about where it's going. You just, I don't know, you just, you just hold on to the bull and hope it takes you where you want to go. You're not in control. It's just, you know, hope. Didn't have a plan. And, you know, in hindsight, yeah. It was never going to work. Nothing we were doing was pointing towards you know, a good life. Uh, you know, We were never making any plans for tomorrow. It was just about today. And that's not a good way to get anywhere, uh, You know, to have a, a stable, solid future. And so it's a song about looking in on the past and being like, yeah, dude, you know, those were good days, but it was never going to be anything worthwhile it felt like everything to me then but in hindsight yeah i mean it was going to end eventually it had to there's just no way around it and maybe that's what those little tinges of tension and uh and dissonance are supposed to be in the song it's supposed to be thinking about these memories and the beauty and brightness and glistening elements of them but understanding that they were they weren't perfect and being older now having the wisdom of time uh, and the opportunity to see the larger picture at hand to say yeah they were good but you know all good things come to an end in in a sense interesting trying to pair this with the title though those luminous noises are god I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that has, requires more context from the album. Maybe knowing the band. I, I don't know. If you have any thoughts on the title, let me know. Otherwise, though, these are my thoughts on pretends those luminous noises are God. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, perspective on this. If you have a different take on things. If I said anything that was wrong and you'd like to correct me, put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. 
Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one, though we do have another video coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to check out a full album. Um, I remembered what it was, and I, I just... Brave Little Abacus, I think, is the band. I don't know what the album is, but I'm pretty sure that's the band we're checking out tomorrow. Um, if you're curious... You, you remember that link tree thing I pointed to a little bit ago? Yeah, dude, in there is a spreadsheet, and it has my schedule on it. You can see everything that's coming up for the current week. I update it on Sunday nights, usually, so it's ready for the full week. If you really want to know what's coming up, you can find it there. Uh, anyways, yeah, that, that wraps it up. Um, you know, as, as usual, remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.